<laughs> yeah, this is uh, Michael Emery with TVOI News, and I'm here with Andrew Chavez. Andrew, how are you doing? I'm good, and you? Pretty good. Uh, so you're going to have a rally in March. Uh, could you kind of uh, explain to people uh, what this is about and what you wish to accomplish? Um, it's the Nation in Distress March. Nation in Distress March. And we're doing it because uh, we want to bring awareness that our nation is in distress. You know, we have a 9% uh, Congress approval rating. 22 veterans commit suicide every day. Um, veterans are being turned away at VA hospitals. Um, $18 trillion in debt. And there's, there's nobody doing anything to fix these problems, you know. Um, we're cutting our military by 40,000 troops. Nobody knows why. Jade Helm is... Um, Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh -oh. I, I can hear it. Yeah. O Operation Jade Helm comes in effect on the 15th. That's when the military is going to openly be training in cities. So imagine going to the liquor store or the grocery store and you see armored Humvees rolling through your city. You're not going to know what's going on. Nobody's answering these questions. So um, we're just trying to bring awareness that people are seeing what's going on and we're fed up. And we're trying to get people to join us in the Oath Keepers, the 3%. The militias, um, because enough's enough. You know, we're in tr we're in trouble. You know, they say that uh, they say that this is all for like national security, right? When the most glaring things that I see with national security are that over 400 Stinger missiles are allowed in the hands of those terrorists in uh, Benghazi, and now we can't even get our politicians to answer the most glaring questions of how that happened. So we have no national security, and with that said. How can we have any type of responsibility or, e or even understanding of what's going on with this? It's insanity. Isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just don't believe the hype what they're saying because if you look at DHS, the number one person to watch for most likely terrorists are veterans. Not ISIS, not, not any of those extremist groups. So it's not about the uh, it's not about the terrorists. It's about the U.S. citizens because it's already we obviously know that this isn't about the terrorists. So they'd do something about those missiles, now, wouldn't they? Yeah, and they would close our borders. They'd make sure um, extremist groups aren't popping up everywhere. They'd monitor them, but they're not. They're monitoring people that love the Constitution. They're monitoring Christians. They're monitoring just U.S. citizens in general. So, so do you think do you think that um, by going to our uh, uh, representatives and, and, and exposing this glaring fact and saying, hey, we need some common sense and quit insulting our intelligence would be a, a smart direction. Honestly, uh, I'm trying that direction. We're trying to say, like, hey, we're here and we're unhappy. But I, I hope protest more to say, like, look, if you're with us and you believe like us, join us. You know, I'm kind of throwing up the flag that we're here. And you're not alone if you believe us, like us. Hey, so what they us. have a problem with right now is what happened in Nevada where uh, thousands of people joined together to say no to an out outreach of a federal agency that was doing something different. And, and now we have a situation like you're with a group of three percenters. We've got Oath Keepers here. Uh, we've got the Lightfoot Militia here. We, we've got all these people. But the, the huge aggregate of the militia is um, is the average person of one hundred and eight. And, and so what they don't understand is is that the entire population of the United States citizenry is looking at them like they're insane. So you're doing exactly what needs to be done. And I want to thank you, Andrew. For doing this. And on the last note, what would you like to say to everybody? I'd just like to say if you want to get involved, you know, look up your Oath Keepers, your Three Percenters, you know, militia, and uh, don't be afraid because if you're afraid, you're already a slave, and uh, that's how they win. So, well, thanks, folks, and this is TVOI News and Boise, Idaho. How are you? Greetings, everybody, today. Lim House here representing Oath Keepers and also in the 3% Lightfoot Militia. So, we're networked in a few directions. But uh, today I want to share some, some thoughts and I just greet all of you today on behalf of the, as patriots of this great state. Today we gather in grave concern of the national distress that we see violating our liberties liberties that were bought and paid for in blood. There is a quote that says, a state of war only serves as an excuse for domestic tyranny. If 
was spoken by a man who knew something about tyranny. His name was Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Our government has directed portions of the combined forces of the military to carry out an exercise called Jade Helm in a domestic setting, primarily in Texas and neighboring Utah. Much of this exercise is overt. Much of it is covert. Once you dig into the mission objectives that are published or, or deduced, it becomes obvious this is a sinister undertaking. The overt, as part of its mission, is to measure and provoke public reaction. And there's been no shortage of public reaction, warranted or designed. And now, just announced this week, there will be no press to, to observe this exercise. It, becomes, it gets more sinister the further it goes. Warfare has always been tied to technology. The Maxim machine gun profoundly changed the battlefield field in World War I. Today, it's a quantum computer. The command and control chain is now driven with artificial and reactive intelligence. Oath keepers need not apply. The seasoned command generals that are faithful to their oath to the Constitution have been fired or retired. Thanks to the National Defense Authorization Act, we are all now part of the battlefield. The founders did something revolutionary when they replaced the sovereign king with the sovereign citizen. That notion of a sovereign citizen is now sufficient to earmark you in the bottomless pit of data collected by the NSA. Mastering the human domain is the stated objective of this exercise. You are to be mastered, manipulated, and maneuvered against. Your sovereignty of human worth is now relegated to a node buried in an NSA computer, waiting for a code to be triggered, determining your, your ultimate disposition. We, the people, did not start this. We, the people, through our apathy and our tax dollars, helped it happen. We face a sinister and formidable power that claims God status over our lives. My caution is, do not react unnecessarily. Keep your powder dry. Negative behaviors are the triggers guaranteeing the response. Don't get faked out, distracted by events that are not relevant. Be informed so you can sort out the calculated distractions. It's a huge psyops game looking for a sucker to fire that first shot. And yes, most of us are likely already hardwired in the command and control language based on our associations, our activism, and our religious beliefs. Restraint with power and discretion is our heritage. Captain John Parker, April 19, 1775, Lexington Green. Stand your ground. Don't fire unless fired upon. But if they mean to have war, let it begin here. have another symbolic representation of American character. In December 1775, an American guesser, anonymously, who was most likely Ben Franklin, wrote to the Pennsylvania Journal. He says, I observed in one of the drums belonging to the Marines now raising there was a painted rattlesnake with the modest motto under it, don't tread on me. Though it is the custom to have some device on the arms of every country, I suppose this may have been inten intended for the arms of America. This anonymous writer speculated on why a snake might be chosen as a symbol of America. 
first it occurred to him that the rattlesnake is found in no other quarter of the world besides the Americas. The rattlesnake has sharp eyes and may therefore be esteemed as an emblem of vigilance. Furthermore, she never be begins an attack, nor when once engaged, engaged at her surroundings. She is therefore an emblem of magnanimity and true courage. She never wounds till she has generously given notice, even to her enemy, and cautioned him against the danger of treading on her. The Don't Tread on Me bullet points vigilance, magnanimity, courage, generous warning. We remain vigilant. We remain informed. We have the high road. We are not backing down, and we will be heard. We, the people, did not start this. Oath keepers have a guide. In ten orders, we will not obey. As I list these, make note of how many are relevant in today's setting. The first one, we will not obey orders to disarm the American people. The second one, we will not obey orders to conduct warrantless searches of the American people. Number three, we will not obey orders to detain American citizens as unlawful enemy combatants or subject them to military tribunals. Number four, we will not obey orders to impose martial law or a state of emergency on a state. Number five, we will not obey orders to invade or subjugate any state that asserts its sovereignty. Number six, we will not obey any order to blockade American cities, thus turning them into giant concentration camps. Number seven, we will not obey any order to force American citizens into any form of detention camps under any pretext. Number eight, we will not obey orders to assist or support the use of any foreign troops on U.S. soil against the American people. Two, keep the peace or two, maintain control. Number nine, we will not obey any orders to confiscate the property of the American people including food and other essential supplies. Number 10, we will not obey orders which infringe on the right of people to free speech, to peaceable assembly, and to petition their government for redress of grievances. In closing, let us reaffirm our oath to the Constitution. Raise your right hand, and I say aye, give your name. Aye in the house. Do solemnly swear, or affirm, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, pledging my life my fortune, my sacred honor, so help me God. Uh, first off, I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank uh, TVOI News for always uh, reporting us. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Andrew Chavez from the Three Percenters. And, um, we're doing this event today because our nation is in distress. Uh, we have a 9% Congress approval rating. 22 veterans commit suicide every day. Veterans are getting turned away at uh, VA hospitals every day. No one's helping them. And now they're cutting our military by 40,000 troops. So we are in distress. Our military is being gutted, and that is what holds this country up. Uh, also, Come the 15th, Operation Jade Helm is starting officially. And uh, what they're going to be doing is conducting military tactics and training in cities 
um, across the nation, such as Utah, Texas, and last night they just uh, started in Connecticut. So just imagine, for instance, you go into the grocery store or anywhere, and you see military and armored Humvees conducting searches and doing whatever in your city. That's not the America I grew up in. That's not the America I fought for. And that's not the America I'll accept. So our country is in distress. And right now, we know the politicians are not listening to us no more. We know that. So we're conducting rallies, basically throwing up a flag, saying, who's with us? Who, who recognizes that this is not the America we grew up in? And if you recognize that, I want to uh, I invite you to join the three percenters, the Oath Keepers, your local militias, and you know, just make a stand and say, we're not going to stand for that anymore. So if you're with us, come join us. Like I said, thank you for coming.